Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. We want to thank God for giving us this opportunity to hear the Word of God and listen to the Word of God. I really, really feel um, encouraged by some of your comments and uh, uh, the things you find in the message. May God bless you all. Amen. Let us uh, pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you. We thank you for the things that you do to us. We are just here because of you, Father. We thank you for everything that you do to us, Lord. We come to you, Heavenly Father. We praise you for the truth of your word. And thank you for those that you put in our path, especially to teach us the glorious gospel of Christ. We pray that we may grow in grace, walk in spirit and truth, mature in faith, and be ready and willing to tell others the hope that we have found in you. Help us to be faithful in all we say and do. And give us opportunities to tell others about Jesus and the joy of our salvation. Father, we thank you. We thank you for warning us of the devastation that unguarded words can have. You help us to keep our tongues under the control. And may the words that I, I speak and the meditation of my heart be always acceptable to you, my God and my Savior. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. We are going to hear the reading of the word of God that comes from the book of James, chapter 3, verses 1 to 12. I'll ask Brother Ben to come and read. Good morning and God bless. And I hope you're all having a wonderful week and a wonderful Sunday and that you're... Uh, just living in the blessings that God has provided for us and just seeking him out every day. As Johnson mentioned, I'll be reading from James 3, 1 to 12. Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is not never at fault in what they say is perfect able to keep their whole body in check. When we put bits in the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder, wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the course of one's life on fire, and itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles and sea creatures have been tamed and have been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is relentless evil, full of deadly poison. With the tongue we praise the Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth comes praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives? or a grape vine bear figs, neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. Praise God. So, yeah, we'll wait for Johnson's message on this one. It's going to be a, a strong one. So bring open ears. God bless. Today I'm going to share with you from the book of James, chapter 3, verses 1 to 12. As we have heard the reading, through Brother Ben. And my theme is the case of the tongue. The case of the tongue. Nothing outside a person can defile them by going into them. Rather, it is what comes out of the person that defiles them. Mark chapter 7, verse 15, Jesus says this way. 
So the soothing tongue is a tree of life. But a perverse tongue crushes the spirit. Proverbs 15 verse 4. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ forgave you. Ephesians 4 verse 29 and 39, 32. So we live in a stressful society. And we live in a society that tends to add to that stress by attacking each other about every imaginable thing. Just listen to the news lately. And hear people attacking each other. Be it politicians, be it anyone, is only attacking each other. Blaming one another is a very natural practice. It is certainly not the working of the Holy Spirit. It springs from nature. It takes no education or training how to learn to point finger. You don't need to go to school for you to point fingers at people. This practice comes straight out of the Garden of Eden immediately after our first parents sinned. They started it and all of us have been doing it ever since. When people are constantly blaming each other, no breakthrough will likely come. Many marriages could be saved overnight if both husband and wife would stop pointing the finger. But science has proven the negative effects of that deceit, that stress that's persistent and resolved anger is on the body. We know that we can be literally eaten from the inside out of our bodies. When we face with jealous rage, envy, and revenge, it is our ways that make the other feel bad. If we would stop keeping a record of wrongs in our marriage, we would be miles ahead. Love keeps no records of wrongs. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 5. Why do we keep records of wrongs in our diaries? To prove that we paid, to prove we said this, promise that. But love will tear the records up so they cannot be referred to it again. So when we put records, we are aiming to return to the records at some time, at some point, to say, you did this on this such, such a day. You did wrong. When one of my brothers was young, whenever he would feel upset or stressed, he would develop each hives on several of his fingers. When he started to calm down, the hives would eventually go away, although it took a while to resolve. Anyone here have that kind of experience? It's true. You can actually be allergic apparently to stress. Most of all us know that victims of bullying or abuse too often develop symptoms of illness from their experience. But did you know that those who inflict pain upon others can also have afflictions in their own lives? In fact, I read a story about Ben Madoff who suffered from several skin maladies after beginning his prison term. When he began his sentence, Madoff stresses levels were so severe that he broke out into hives and other skin maladies soon after. So the ancient Jewish tradition would say that Ben's skin elements were symptoms of his crime of deception and lies. Even in ancient times, Jewish scholars post persisted links between sordid speech and skin eruptions. That's why they termed leprosy a disease of the tongue. When someone spoke unwell of another, slandered another, or broke an oath made to another, it was said that that person's skin would break out, revealing the ugliness and spitefulness within. And listen to this. Even if you were telling the truth about something less than kosher, about what someone else did, you were still in the wrong to speak evil of that person in public or to another. It was up to God to judge that person and not up to you. So the Hebrew word for a person with leprosy is mosora, a play on words with the Hebrew word of one who speaks evil, mosira. 
So the cure for lepros then, or any other kind of skin disease would be tsuva of the tongue, and could say repentance for one's bad mouthy of another. So for the Jewish people, always have great power. The world was created by voice of Yahweh. Just by saying, let there be trees, they were all there. Just a voice. So the prophets spoke the words of God placed within them by the divine. When Jesus was baptized, words were spoken. When Jesus was transfigured, words were spoken. When Jesus experienced this conversion, words, when Paul experienced his conversion, words were spoken. And it is said that when a rabbi is blessed to speak the words of God, the spirit speaks over him. Or, uh, but as words have the power of God to heal, as we see it in the gospel, when Jesus heals the leprous man, words also have great power to hurt and to heal. In fact, we don't know that the old age is not true at all. Remember this from your childhood growing up. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. No, that's not true. Not true. Psychologist tells us that the abusive words have just as much more power to create lasting psychological damage within a human being than a physical abuse. I've heard a lot of people saying I would rather want physical abuse than verbal abuse. Words are extremely powerful weapons when launched as an artillery. They are real powerful. I call them sometimes card missiles because they can destroy people. It is our words that make the difference. It is what our children hear that affects them. We may have thoughts which may or may not be true, but when we utter them, the damage is done. Perhaps this is why the Jewish people are so, so adamant about the sin of the tongue. So in the scriptures, the punishment for lepros was to be placed outside the community for a period of time, usually a week, in atonement for the sin of speaking against another. The time apart was to allow that person to experience a similar humiliation and pain such as afflicted to the one they slandered or spoke against. In order to re-enter the community, the priest would need to pronounce that person clean, yet more power. Without that word of pronouncement, that person could not become part of their family and people. However, the sin of the tongue had more than one meaning. The people who aren't uh, the only ones who could, uh, you could uh, be, uh, abuse power. So the priests themselves, with the power of that clean or unclean, could negatively manipulate the people as well, banishing them to the outskirts of town for unlimited amounts of time, not even a week, keeping them apart from home and temple because they could not pronounce those words clean. So perhaps this is what Jesus knew when he took the power upon himself, uttering, be clean. And then be abiding the many to present himself to the priest so that he could re-enter the community and be at peace. Jesus said those words to the people. Okay, malicious speech is damaging no matter how or why it occurs. And it can come from all sorts of places. And source of well-meaning people. We know that all too well in the church. Even in the church building, people say those things. But if you notice how, maybe sometimes on the way to church, the tongue makes an attempt to spoil the whole thing. There is a shouting and arguing, bickering, murmuring, defensiveness, and the pointing of finger. If you notice it, I've noticed it, even at church, people shouting at each other, pointing fingers. Well, you're not alone. It is so typical and so frequent. It happens. Satan does not want you to go to church. He knows how to attack and to get us frustrated and angry at the very time we ought to be worshipping full of anticipation. In any case, on our way to worship, the devil loves us and lies to us and deceives. That's what the devil does. He uses us. Bad things often happen when something good is supposed to happen or is about to happen. You know, you are going to church, you think I'm going to worship. 
But with the spirit of worshipping, the devil also accompanies some people to church as well. So that by the time you enter into the church building, your spirit of worship is no longer there. Worshipping God is always good and right. We therefore should not be surprised when the devil enters the picture. And what is his instrument? Surprise, surprise, it is the tongue. <laughs> the instrument that is used by the devil to attack Christians is the tongue. He knows that if you use the tongue, you won't go anywhere. When you are lied about that you have done so, such and such, it is a great opportunity for a strength of character. You tell what you are when you are under fire. And there is nothing in terms of the heat of the deceitful or a lying tongue. My advice is this, you may take it or not, do not respond, focus on worshipping God. Keep going up to Jerusalem to worship God. Go on to church, get there and worship there. But a lot of people, because they've received lies, they've received all these things, they stop coming from church because of the tongue. It is the tongue that has stopped a lot of people worshipping God. It is the tongue that has changed a lot of people from serving Christ. It is the tongue. The tongue is no good. And when the body of Christ becomes afflicted with the sins of, of the tongue, the entire body becomes crippled. Whether gossip or slander or well-meaning reports of someone else's wrongdoings or sins, these words spread like a contention. Eating away the body resources until the church no longer functions as the living waters of grace but as a stagnant or a pool of contamination. I've seen it happening. And I've seen people stop coming to church. Why? Because of someone's tongue. The tongue is no good. The tongue is not a neutral thing. It is a vile part of our being and is in and of itself intrinsical evil, wicked and poisonous. It is not our ways that make the tongue deadly poisonous. The tongue is already poisonous before we utter a single word. <laughs> Maybe you say, why? Why am I saying this? This is because the tongue mirrors the heart. Jesus said, out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander in Matthew 15 verse 19. This is Jesus' diagnosis of the heart of all men and women. So he sees that everything comes from there. So it is the tongue that mirrors what is right in your heart. It sees what is right in your heart. In a way, the devil is on the road to hell and he wants to take as many as with him as possible to hell. So he wants to create chaos in the meantime. He wants to inflame and paralyze the Christians. He wants Christians to get banned by their words. He wants Christians to bend others by an ill choice of words. It happens in families. It happens in marriages. It happens in churches. In church meetings. In business meetings. In council meetings. In parking lots of the church. In cars on the way home. It happens. It happens. Why is the town called fire? Because it gets so easily out of control. Whatever it bears is destroyed and brought into complete disuse. What is burned is never the same again. It is called fire because what it do to ourselves is damaged. Sometimes taking a good while to get things back together. It is called fire because we so often do irreparable damage to others, even those closest to us, through the tongue. We have cursed people with the tongue. We have nailed people with a tongue. We have accused people with a tongue. We had lied without the tongue. We are left demoralized, weak, and compromised and defeated. We are angry with the world. Our loved ones, our friends, our neighbors, ourselves. The dove, which is the Holy Spirit, lives from us and flies away, leaving us to ourselves. Because the Holy Spirit does not leave in a board that has got a bad tongue. Do not anger the Holy Spirit that is in you. So whenever the Holy Spirit is angered, it flees out. 
It leaves us out. We become unteachable, defensive, irritable, full of self-pity, full of unkindness. When we speak in that condition, nothing comes out right. Now you know where James got his teaching. James contrasts the tongue with the nature. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, creatures of the sea are being tamed and have been tamed by men. But no man can tame the tongue. James 3, verse 7 and 8. Such living creatures are not guilty of deadly poisonous tongues. He then shows the damage the tongue, such as small member of the body, can do. We might expect you to say what we can do to get on top of things when it comes to the tongue control. But he concludes that the tongue no man can tame. Nobody can, not a single person under heaven, old or young, rich or poor, no matter one's color, race or nationality, tongue control cannot be attained by any gift we have, by any amount of education we receive, or by the highest level of intellect. I've seen prime ministers, presidents of countries, saying bad ways to each other. I've seen it happening. War of words on TV. I think you would agree with me. I've seen it happen. Different wars being fought through words. But even a Christian can do great damage. He warns us if the tongue is not controlled. Conversion did not conquer the tongue problem. Yes, you are converted. Sometimes you are not conquered the tongue properly. There is not a promised work of grace, second, third, fourth, even tenth, or hundredth that will root out the problem of the tongue. What does that mean then? As a forest fire is started by a small spark, the tongue also is a fire. and It spreads evil to all parts of the body. And we could add the body of Christ. It corrupts the whole person, but equally spreads rapidly through the people of God cause disruption, disunity, degradation, defeat and despair. It happens in families at work and wherever we are in the world, it is because of the tongue. The tongue is destroying. What is James' point if there is nothing we can do and there is nothing that God promised to do? Is he trying to demoralize us? No, it is a wake-up call to take responsibility for our words and deeds so that we will be consciously aware and able to improve. God made us in such a way that we do change by being warned and seeing the consequences, and we do. We do change. Men can't tame the tongue, but God can. <laughs> yes, when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, it's power, you can't help it but praise and sing and revere God with all your heart and might. When the Holy Spirit is in you, you just feel praising God, even on your own. In your own car, you feel, you praise, you sing songs of joy because your heart is okay. A soul that is true will issue beautiful words of praise and prayer. A soul that is tired with hateful and malicious words, spilling from the tongue will likewise yield a blistering and weeping body. Your words are only as thin as your skin. And the word of God penetrates every one of us, judges the thoughts and attitudes of the hearts. Hebrews 4 verse 12. We should know that. There is an old story of a church woman named Mildred known as the church gossip and uphold of what she saw as the church's moral standards. Although she regularly stuck her nose into other people's business, reported on their activities, and through, although the other members didn't like what she did, particularly if they become the brand of her righteousness, they were all too afraid to take her on. So they started silent, they stayed silent, and Mildred continued her moral crusades. One evening, however, she made a grave mistake, accusing the newest member of the church, named Howard, of being an alcoholic, 
When she spotted his old pickup truck parked in front of the only bar in town, she emphatically told Howard and many others that everyone knew exactly what he was doing. You are drinking. You are a drunkard. Howard, a man of few words, stared at her for a moment, saying nothing, and then turned and walked away. He didn't defend himself, didn't protest or explain or deny. He just simply said nothing. Later that night, Howard parked his car in front of Mildred's house and left it there all night. If the rumor had been allowed to fester, Mildred would have severely damaged those in Howard's life. As it was, the damage was done to her. For when one attacks a brother or a sister, or a sister creates a gangrene in the body that is hard to repair. So Howard, by leaving the car for the whole night at Mildred's house, he was saying maybe he is in love with Mildred. So when people saw it, the car, they were now asking, why is the car at your house? Why is Howard's car at your house at night, the whole night? So we better be careful with what we say. The church is a place in which all tongues are to be lifted in praise to the glory of God. So whenever you come to church, use your tongue to praise God and not to say anything negative, something that destroys people. The church is to be the Christ's body on earth and with his hand of healing and his words of grace. Perhaps this is why Charles Wesley penned the tune we all know from hymnals, or oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, a song reminding us of our purpose, that is the church, praise and worship. So our tongue should be used for praise and worship, not for destroying people's lives. God against your tongue. May God bless you. May God help you as you think of the things that you have said and you now maybe need to apologize for what you have already said. We say it with our tongue. It is only God who is to judge people. God bless you from now and evermore. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for our heavenly example of how to live on earth. To your praise and glory, I pray that we may reflect the Lord Jesus in all wisdom and understanding, that genuine humility and great gentleness of heart may become the hallmark of our lives. To your praise and glory. This we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I urge you that it is time for us to thank God as well. So think about it, what God has done in your life. And if you think what God has done to your life, if you remember what God has been doing in your life throughout the week, and a lot of things that happen to your life, what do you do? You just want to say thank you. Even, take for example, if you don't appreciate the message that I've said, maybe it has offended you, but there are also positive things that God has done in your life. Just say thank you, Lord. And it is time to give your offering to God so that I can pray for you. Heavenly Father, we pray for these offerings, Father. We pray that you are God, and you continue to help us. You continue to provide us with all the necessary things that we need. We pray for the gift of life, only the gift of life, Father, that we are here today not because we are clever, not because we are more educated, not because we are what we think we are, but because of your grace mercy. May you continue to look after us, Father. Bless this offering. In your name I pray. Amen. Let us thank God by receiving grace.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all from now and evermore. Amen. God bless you all.